Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. We are going to be doing um, day nine in our watercolor journal, everyday watercolor journal um, ideas. And I am going to be painting leaves today. So I'm just in the mood to paint leaves. I used to do this a lot when I was a beginner watercolor painter and just learning. Um, would paint like lots and lots of leaves. So I'm just using a size 10 brush. This is my Princeton um, Velvet Touch brush, size 10 round. And I'm just gonna play with different colors. Last or yesterday we did um, all these muted colors and I still have a bunch of them in my palette that I've just kind of re-wet. I think I'm gonna stick with some of these colors. I'll introduce a few brighter colors but this is just a fun palette, so it was a lot. If you didn't check out yesterday's video for how we mixed some of these colors, go check that out. Um, and yeah, we're just going to jump right in. I'm going to make just a little bit more of some of these purples, greens, blues. I am going to throw in some magenta, alizarin, crimson. Uh, yeah, that looks fun. So I'm just going to be painting a winding kind of leaf structure. I'm going to use two brushes, I think just the size 10 and this um, two rigor uh, and just paint. Sometimes we just want to um, paint repetitively over and over again. So let's see, so I'm going to paint this way, even though normally I would turn my paper. I think but I'm gonna paint like kind of along this line and just I'm just gonna put in a few lines as like guidelines and just start to use this as my base so my leaves I'm going to be doing just a kind of a traditional or a standard size leaf like this and I usually paint these in one or two strokes depending on how big my brush is and how big my surface is and leaving some of these water drops on the end or spreading them out if you need to this paper in this sketchbook is not 100% cotton um, so it doesn't absorb the paint as well or as quickly. So you will get some of these water droplets on the end. Some, I'm just going to leave a lot of them and see how it looks. But sometimes just going slow enough so that way my shapes, I'm not getting big gummy shapes and traveling away from the branch a little bit. So do, 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 travel, press and lift. Do, 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 travel a little bit, press and lift. And just continuing to kind of build this out. Let's change some colors from here. I'm gonna add some branches. Adding some water. That one's going to be interesting. It's either going to dry super funky. And then this is definitely just a great way to get, like I said, practice in. Of like, just brush control, water control making adjustments as you go like you do something and you're like ah oh, that didn't turn out exactly how i wanted it to like i have these really thick stems right here so the next one i'm going to really concentrate on getting that thin stem the brush i have some of it is the brush that i have doesn't have a great tip on it any longer because i've abused it <laughs> and working on filling the space as much as possible but without 
getting too crowded. I think that's a great skill in composition and how do I build keep building without getting too crowded or too muddied how do my color choices affect like the overall look and feel I'm going to add a little more magenta to this oh I think this might be too bright for this but I'm going to go for it it'll be Certainly interesting to add this bright color that's really going to pull the eye. Letting things dry also so that you can paint over them. Again, I've got another thick line there. I could also do my leaves away from the stem and then add in stems later that connect them or add in more stems now of places I want to add leaves to then you can even go in and add some other textures if you want some little round berry like textures just leaving these like pokey out, um, <laughs> pokey out, such a technical term. These uh, branches or little, yeah, I guess they would be branches. So you can leave some of them bare. I'm going to see if I can get myself all the way. to the edge of the paper in a way that makes sense. I am going to add more leaves. I'm just kind of building out the stem structure. All right, let's add some more the right off the page. You can drop color into some of them. I need more blue. Blue is like very central. There's not a lot like towards the edges. So what do you guys think? Are you feeling this exercise? Oh, don't put too many together. All right, I really want some things to dry so I can layer a few things. So I guess in here, right here, these two are dry. I'm going to layer a blue one over that. Oh, lovely. Look at that. And in here, I want to keep my colors pretty opaque right now as I'm layering. Otherwise, you will get a little too muddy. But if you can see... You know, you create that sheer, transparent color and you can see layers through layers, then it just becomes interesting rather than super muddy. I think these are dry. We're going to find out. Even doing the same color over another color. And you could do this for ever. I think I need to go back to green 
for a little bit. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back and add a few more layers and some other textures. All right, everything's nice and dry. I am going to clip this down. Just try to avoid the clippied area. Just to keep it a little flatter. Ooh, this looks great. I'm gonna layer and you know what? I'm gonna layer some lighter colors, but also some darker colors over the top. Only a few, because again, we're trying to avoid the too muddy, too muddiness. Um, but I think some contrast, because these are all relatively the same uh, value, just very different colors, which all work really well together but the values are the same. So I'm gonna do some really light greens. Over a few areas and actually, I don't think I wanna do too much more green. This olive color, just cause the branches are this color too. Let me do one more in here. Okay. Now, let's see what happens when, sorry, just, let's see what happens when I go really dark in some areas. So I'm going to make some of this blue again, but I'm going to do really, really dark. Paints gray. And I'm going to switch my brush size. I said I was only using one brush. I lied. I'm sorry. I'm going to use my size four. And I'm going to put these darker details in smaller. This still isn't opaque enough for me. Just enough water to get the flow going, but lots and lots of pigment. There we go. Cause, and, and I know these will even dry lighter, but they're going to be just dark enough. I'm going to do this with purple too. So I changed my brush size, so I'm painting smaller leaves. I'm not doing it everywhere, but I'm painting them super dark and saturated. I'm not worrying about overlapping, but just kind of look at what that saturation or that um, contrast does for the, for the whole thing, for the piece. It just brings a whole other dimension to it. It was looking pretty flat before. Beautiful colors, beautiful colors, but they were all the same value pretty much. We're gonna introduce a little bit of darker purple that's a little too purple for me. Ah, hopefully I can add just a little bit of yellow to it. All right, I think this will be good. There we go, yeah. So see, still desaturated, like not too, too purple, but much darker. Than before. Oh, I just put my hand in a leaf down there that was so wet. Let's get some of these like right in the middle. And Let's add a little bit. I'm going to go sap green and I'm probably going to keep it like full sap green because I think it'll work with this. We're going to see how it feels. I feel like it's going to fall in line, but feel like a nice pop of saturation. 
over top of what already is going on here. And this kind of green gray color, which is beautiful and lovely, like an olivey green gray. And then this sap green, core sap green, I absolutely adore. Just really has this glow to it of, of yellow, yellow, very earth toned yellow green. And I keep putting my hand in wet parts. All right, this was fun. And then if you want to keep going, I could even see doing this blue and green to make a really, really dark green and adding some, this brush is terrible for this. Go back to my rigger, but adding some more of these kind of lines, super fun very meditative. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was inspiring in some way and not too, too simple. But sometimes when we're sitting down and we just don't know what to paint, we're not motivated. Having a few things in our back pocket just to get us to start painting, like let me just paint leaf shapes over and over and over again. I know how to do that. I know I can feel successful at it. I can play with colors. Um, and then as you're painting, something about the color palette might inspire you. Something about the leaf structure might inspire you. And sometimes that'll be all you paint. And then you'll just move on to the next day. But you've painted, you have put your, pa your paintbrush to paper. And that maybe is all you needed. And that can be really satisfying as well. So thanks so much for painting with me again today for day nine. I'll see you on day 10 for our next painting. I don't know what it'll be yet, but I hope you join me again to find out. All right, y'all check out the description of the video for links to supplies and materials. You can also uh, check out the, or please like and subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with someone who you also might think would enjoy something like this. Um, go check out the playlist with all of the other videos for your everyday watercolor journal ideas. And yeah, happy painting y'all. Take care.